What's up today guys we have got a little job some friends of mine brought me a car it's got like some dead battery type syndrome Les Schwab told him it's not the battery guys don't go to Les Schwab for mechanic work okay they're good for tires but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that thing out today we're gonna talk about your battery because I think it's a dead battery so you know it's a battery it's probably not an alternator because they drove a cry ways to get here so we're looking for a battery or probably parasitic draw. So stay tuned. Like I said, they drove it like 30 something miles here. Let's see if she fires. There was no battery light on when uh, they drove it up. So yeah, definitely has got some slow crank action going on. But you see, we don't have a battery light on. So, so probably not the charging system. This is a 2013 RAV4. It's got the four banger because they quit putting the V6s in them because they're dumb. There is their battery. Everything looks pretty, pretty good. It's probably charging all right. So you saw me pull it in. It has either had got a super drastic parasitic draw or this battery is just shit house. So, let's fire it. Man, that's super bad. All right. So normally it's something like this. I don't have like an amp checker or you don't have an amp checker. What I do is I just turn all the accessories on high. Headlights, AC, see the fans are on. So that's suitable number for charging as far as I'm concerned. Like I said, I don't think it's the alternator. Now I'm gonna set up and we'll check it for parasitic draw here real quick. All right, what you do is typically unhook the round wire. You wanna set this tool up, if you have one, to the amp side. This, put this to DC amps. Now because this is a computer car, you can have more allowable parasitic loss. This is showing almost half an amp, which is quite a bit. And what you want to do here is hang out for a minute and see the computers with modules and things will shut off and see if the loss falls down. You generally want to be closer to about 200 milliamps ish. So we've been sitting here long enough. I would think the modules would have probably wanted to shut down at this point. So I went and got a battery terminal so I could quit holding on to this thing to see what was going on. And then when I plugged it back in, you can see that or not, we are back into an acceptable range here. So let's hang out for a minute, I guess. Hmm. Strange. After playing the, with this for a second, it looks like we have some sort of parasitic draw. When I key the car on, key it off, it powers down to that about a half an amp like you saw. So there's where we are like that. This has been sitting here for a couple minutes. It should have powered all the way down. So what I can do right here is I can disconnect my amp and shut it all the way off. And then when I plug this back in, it comes back on, but only right here. This will settle down to, like I said, was an acceptable level under 200 milliamps. So now I just need to figure out what's staying on. All right, so I've been playing with this for a little while, about an hour. There's not really a whole lot that I can show you other than what a parasitic draw test breaks down to is you can back probe the fuse to see if you're passing current across it. I wasn't terribly successful doing that this time. Or you can pull fuses until the draw goes away. You saw what was going on with the car and it was pulling down about half an amp. And what was really bizarre, it was pulling down half an amp if I keyed the car on and keyed it back off. It's like, like I said, you saw 500 or 450 or whatever. Uh, but when I unhook the battery and plug it back in, then it returns to a normal vehicle draw. So uh, I messed around with this for a little while and I'll show you the number that I got it to settle to right now. See that? So that kind of number is completely acceptable for a car like this that has 12 computers. I'm not gonna trip on that at all. If you're driving a carbureted old car, it should basically have zero unless you have a radio or something like that. So I'll show you what this cycle's like now, uh, where it wasn't cycling properly before. So 
we start out at like half an amp, 400. Wait for it. And then when the computers power off, we're back down to where we're supposed to be, so. Frankly, I just think what was going on with this is it was dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and diamond file the fuses and like clean up that fuse box. I don't really know what was making this thing drain. I just assumed there was some corrosion somewhere. This is a set of like diamond tip files. They look like a little tweezer in there, but they're diamond tip files. So what you can do is you can use them like a pincher and pinch on a spade or use them, uh, you know, and stick into the hole or whatever. Basically, I hadn't gotten to the point of fighting with this. Then I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling some fuses out to see if I'll kill anything. May as well start with this big giant one right here. Well, as it turns out, I mean, it doesn't look dirty, but pulling that first one out killed the issue so basically what you will do is you take this file like I said it's like a tweezer like this you just reach down in the hole just pinch it and just clean it up just make sure you scratch it up a little bit make sure that you get anything that was on there off there it's easier than trying to get like sandpaper or whatever down in there okay and then we'll just do the same thing with this guy and these fold away like that and then you can just get in here and make sure there's no grime a little scratchy scratchy and you're good <laughs> all right you can see the same thing right here basically what i'm going to do is get this fuse out of here go get my tool but pull that fuse out of there and then I'll clean that hole up the same way but for whatever reason you don't have the little fuse grabber thing um, so a pair of needle nose or something will be easy to get that out of there and like I said while well, these don't really look dirty you never really know can we just get up in here make sure those terminals are cleaned up make sure there's nothing in there Really, why this module didn't want to actually didn't want to turn off? So, let's so get back in the hole. Yeah, good stuff. So that's dropping off even more right there. So, so yeah, I don't know. We must have just had a little bit of high resistance in one of those two fuses. But I put the fuse back in. You can see it's doing what it's supposed to be doing now. So I guess probably I'll come down here and play with this a little bit tomorrow and make sure that we're good to go. I'm going to charge it up overnight and then test again in the morning. I left this car on the battery charger overnight because the battery was weak. We had that conversation already. And uh, it turns out my battery charger decided to shit the bed overnight. By some grace of God, it didn't burn my house down. This battery is pissed off. <laughs> Not how I wanted my day to start, but such is life, I guess. And then of course, in typical fashion, the battery charger is working now. So I don't know. Is that other battery actually messed up and it made my battery charger go wonk? I guess we'll have to find out. These are the days of our lives. I sort of think this battery shorted internally. Wow. This battery just got out of that pail. It's been sitting in that pail for a couple hours. It's still well over 100 degrees, okay? There's something seriously wrong inside of this battery. 118 on the side here. All right, so this battery, this battery's been on the charger for like over an hour probably. And it was pushing, well, I was pushing about 5 amps into it, but this one's only at 100 degrees. I guess I've come to the conclusion that this battery shit the bed. And not my charger, because the charger's been charging out here. Like I said, I've been running for well over an hour. And it's charging, so we'll see. When I put this battery in the pail, it was like it, well, I think I showed you, right? 10.6 or something? Now... When I'm out, can you see this? After it sat in there, that's where the voltage is, 6.2, so. She bang.
Bang, bang, shebang, new battery. Coming up. When Knob returned later with a new battery, he found to his surprise that the power draw had also returned. Since he knew that those two fuses were part of the power steering system, it led him to suspect that particular electronic control module, or ECM. After hearing the report, the customer agreed that Knob should install a new ECM. Once the old ECM was out, Knob examined it closely. He noticed some scorch marks on the inside cover, and there it was, the ultimate source of the power draw, a burnt chip on the board. Now, back to Knob with instructions on how he got that ECM in and out of there. All right, so what we're after then, this is the ECM right here, okay? It's bolted in. There's just two pieces of hardware, one here and then one here. This plastic cover needs to come off. This is how it's bust into the actual motor. And then there's pigtails on the back that are just kind of a bear for it to, uh, to reach it in the car. Here's that cover that just popped off there without an issue. And then what that does is it exposes the bus bolts. Like I said, those are an eight millimeter. So I'll just go ahead and take those off real quick. Okay, so I have the old computer out. This is the new computer. So what we're up against here. So in the car, I was able to unplug these in the vehicle. Uh, this one, or like when it was mounted, I mean, I was unable to get this one unplugged in the car. So it was kind of, hey, luckily when you unplug the computer, and swing it down out of the way, the wire harness actually pulls down here pretty far so you can get it out. This is your main power and ground supply to that plug-in, just super fat, like it's on that 60 amp lead out there. And so that's why it was killing the battery, pulling away too much power. So I'm gonna put a little dielectric grease on those ends just for the sake of doing it. And then I'm gonna wrestle this thing right back up into that hole. Okay, real quick, since I didn't get this going out, this lower airbag comes out, the mounts are right here. Okay, there's one on both sides of the steering wheel, right here and right here. And then they bolt up from the bottom right here as well. So those ones you can get to obviously from the bottom after you drop that lower trim piece. And then these ones you just have to, you have to stick a socket through the hole right here because the cover is all in this place. So I'll put it back on and, and show you kind of what the hole looks like. I thought I recorded it, but I blew it. So this is with the airbag back in. You can see those tabs right here. Like those two are pretty straightforward, right? They just go like that. And then, these ones, I get the light to shine on there. You can see the tab back there. Same on the other side, pretty easy. Obviously you wanna disconnect the battery and do all that stuff so you don't blow yourself up with the airbag first. You saw that draw shut off. Um, I don't know why it hangs on for so long, but it's like five or seven minutes or something. And to me that doesn't make sense with power steering, but it is going off. Pretty certain it was not going off before. It was just hanging out for it's just hanging out forever. I never saw it go off. So that pretty much sums it up. Don't let anybody gouge you on that ECU replacement because you saw how short of a time that thing was in and out of there in under an hour. It's taken me longer to verify the repair than it does to actually get that computer in and out of there. Book labor time on that computer it looks like it's somewhere between 1.5 and 2 hours. Even though that price was kind of harsh from the dealer for that computer, but you can find them used. But again, buying a used computer, you're kind of wondering if you're going to end up with the same kind of uh, issue that this one had. So honestly, nowadays the dealer stuff isn't that much more expensive because the corruption, the parts yards and things. 2013 and related RAV4 power steering computer module replacement. Uh, pretty easy. So don't be afraid. Get in there, fix it yourself. I uh, appreciate you watching. Peace. That wraps up another episode of Snail Racing. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. In case you are confused about what color this car is, it's white. It's white. <laughs>